Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Wood Gas Stove Science. This is part six of paint can stove optimization. Uh, last week um, we had talked about uh, this stove being pretty well optimized, uh, but then I got a few questions about whether it was optimized for the use in sticks uh, or if it was just optimized for the use in pellets. So this week I decided to uh, see if it was optimized for the use of sticks. Uh, so this first batch, uh, this first experiment was done with uh, some sumac bushes. Now these are very punky wood. Uh, there's not a lot, doesn't seem to be a lot of energy in these. Um, when you cut them, they're, they're very spongy. It was dry, uh, but it was very spongy feeling. Uh, so I clipped up a whole container full um, and uh, like I said, it was dry. Um, there seemed to be some ants and insects that were living in them. Uh, so I just used a little bit of liquid heat, uh, put in the top of it, a very little bit actually, uh, put my flame concentrator on and my pot stand on. And today I needed to use a, um, a wind deflector because the wind was really blowing hard. Uh, so you can immediately see uh, that this wood seemed to have a tendency to smoke a little bit more. Right from the beginning, as it was getting ready to gasify, there was a lot more smoke. And here you can see it. Uh, the smoke wasn't coming out. The flames were actually burning it. Uh, but you could definitely tell that there was a lot more smoke in this wood. Um, the flame was very unstructured. Uh, not like... Um, the normal flames that we've, we get when we burn wood pellets. Um, it was very unstructured. It didn't seem to cap off the pyrolysis zone very well. So in occasionally because of that you would see a wisp of smoke come up. Uh, but you can see how unstructured it is, how the twist doesn't actually close off the pyrolysis zone. Uh, so the next thing that I did was I used some hardwood, um, you know, uh, choppings. Um, from a couple different trees and there was also a little bit of sumac in there and just some just a few little sticks um, so I did the same thing I lit it with uh, liquid heat put on my flame concentrator immediately and the pot stand uh, and waited for it to fire up uh, this fired up relatively quickly um, started to gasify uh, pretty pretty quickly you can see the the jets start up relatively um, early on and the flames started to twist around uh, like they normally do when you're getting a good burn. Uh, so here I, I'm going to let this play a little bit um, so you can actually see how the fire um, starts off on the wood and slowly lifts up and gets up to the secondary airports and then starts to swirl around. Uh, and you can see occasionally a new jet will start forming. Um, so it makes it, it's very interesting. So I, I will let you watch this for a second. So once the jets are um, full and they start to spin around and close off that paralysis zone, um, at this point I decided I'd do a boil test. Uh, so I started the boil test with uh, my standard two cups of water uh, using my big stainless steel pot. Um, I believe that the water would boil a little bit faster if it wasn't in such a large pot uh, because the flame only hits just in the center. Um, so here you can see the flame is pretty well developed and I'm about ready to put that uh, pot on now. Um, now one thing that... Um, did seem to slow things down a little bit was that I really filled this uh, stove up with these wood chips. Um, I filled it almost right up to the secondary air holes. Um, and I think that kind of slowed down the starting of it a little bit. And um, I think it also slowed down the power of the flames right at the beginning of the, the burn. Uh, so at this point, I've got the um, water on for just about six minutes, and it's, it's a pretty good boil. Um, it's not a rolling boil, but it's still a pretty good boil. So I'm going to say that it, burn, it boiled just about six minutes. Um, so here you can see, once I remove the pot, the flame is still uh, relatively good. Um, and oh yeah, and by the way, there was a little bit of soot on the bottom of that pot. It wasn't too bad, uh, but there was a little bit. Uh, now this is something that I don't 
like to recommend is adding more wood but in this instance I wanted to add some more wood because I knew it was burning a little bit faster than the wood chips um, so I wanted to see what would happen and as you can see the fire does drop down dangerously close to going out uh, but then it does recover and the reason why it drops down is because those pieces of wood that I'm throwing in there actually break through the pyrolysis zone and they're much colder than the rest of the wood that's in there uh, so it actually really really slows down the wood gas production and that pyrolysis zone is broken so it takes a while for it to recover although once it is recovered it seems like the flame is a little bit more powerful uh, so I have put up in the upper right hand corner um, the wood chip burning uh, so you can kind of see the difference between them and how much more stable the wood chips seem to be I, I mean the the wood pellets um, those the wood pellets uh, are much more compact and they, they just seem to burn so much better uh, of course they are a manufactured wood uh, and this wood that's burning in the main picture is um, something that you would find out in in the wild when you're hiking and you use a your your knife to to um, baton up a little bit of wood so you can have lunch uh, here I had I just added a little bit more wood so you can actually look down inside the fire uh, and see it start to um, turn into char uh, which is kind of neat but whenever you throw something in there it does slow that fire down uh, so actually um, I had some mixed results today with the sumac um, I think we would need to do a little bit more work the actually the burn time for the sumac was only about 11 minutes from starting uh, to when it actually went out and just had coals left uh, which wasn't very good with the um, chunks of wood uh, it was actually closer to 20 to 25 minutes and then I added some some wood in there to, and it extended it to about 35 minutes um, so here's just a view not looking directly down but you can actually see the spinning uh, flames and here's a view at the very end with the uh, large pieces of char um, which are pretty impressive uh, so that's the update this week and thank you for joining me with wood gas stove science part six on paint can stove optimization thank you goodbye